What's the first thing that comes to mind if you're out with friends, family, or I mean, the last couple of years, maybe you're by yourself, and out of nowhere, mood change, big shift, you're frustrated, you're angry, you're confused. I mean, first thought for me is like, why did I just make myself mad? But second thought might be, did, did my blood sugars have something to do with this? You glance over at your blood sugars, oh, I'm low. That makes sense, but does it? Today we're getting into, do blood sugars actually cause a change in your mood? Without any further ado, let's get into our theme song. I've spent the last 10 years pushing the limits while identifying trends and patterns in my type 1 diabetes management. Follow along as I learn, apply, and share the fitness, nutrition, and lifestyle strategies that I've learned from diabetes experts around the world. The real question is, how can we live fearlessly with diabetes while maintaining stable blood sugars? This podcast is here to give you the answer. My name is Matt Vandevecht, head coach and co-founder of FTF Warrior, and welcome to Part of My Pancreas. So last week, uh, I was with my wife and we were uh, out shopping, and during the day, I ended up having a low blood sugar, hypoglycemia. And it was not fun, obviously. <laughs> I don't know why I have to specify that, but it didn't feel good, right? Got a little shaky, got some sweats going on, and ultimately had to treat. You know, I had some sugar, checked my blood sugar, it was low, and uh, it, it made sense. There was some frustration, there was a certain level of, uh, we gotta go, you know, with the, the low blood sugar in that situation. Like, I have to get back to my sugar. And with that came a little bit of a mood swing, but not bad. You know, a little bit of a grouchy and not super excited about the rest of the shopping trip because I was low. And, uh, you know, got back into range, had my sugar, and we were fine. We moved on. Now, to get back home, start making dinner, and about an hour-ish, hour and a half after dinner, what do you think happened? It was a high blood sugar. <laughs> Hyperglycemia. Now, at this point... I am feeling nauseous, I've got a little bit of a headache going on. It wasn't anything too crazy, but it was high enough that I felt it. And immediately, I get frustrated. Negative thoughts, everything else is going wrong in my life. It's not just blood sugars. Why is it hot outside? You know, why didn't Target have the thing that we needed? Arr! And I'm getting moody. And my wife's like, dude, Matt, what's going on? You know, and, and at this point she recognizes that uh, sometimes when blood sugars are out of range, I do tend to feel a little bit different than I usually am. I, I tend to be uh, a bit more emotional, <laughs> to say the least. And what's interesting is that this led me down a, a spiral of, you know, Google searches and looking up research papers. And you guys know my, my general curiosity about blood sugars and type 1 diabetes. And, uh, of course, I was aware of this concept before, but having found hard proof was a bit different. And so looking into these topics, do blood sugars cause emotional swings? Is there a correlation between blood sugars and being grouchy, happy, sad, frustrated, whatever the emotions that we feel? And it turns out the answer is yes. So congrats, you can blame all of your bad emotions on blood sugars. No, of course not. No, we cannot blame our diabetes for our emotional swings because obviously sometimes there are other things at play as well. Prime example, this is not the first time that I've recorded this episode. <laughs> I recorded the whole thing a couple hours ago, and uh, when I went to upload it for today's episode, the footage was corrupted. And I was like, what? And I had to calm myself and say, Matt, don't get mad, just film it again. Right? But this is uh, another example of other things that can lead to emotional shifts. So it's not always your blood sugars. However, let's dive in. So, what controls basically everything we do? Our thinking, our emotions, our actions, it's up here. It's our brain. What does our brain run on? Well, I mean, there's a lot more complicated answer to that, but of course, it needs glucose. It needs sugar in order to complete a lot of the tasks, and our brain actually uses glucose. Believe it or not, there's actually some new studies coming out about how uh, the utilization of glucose in your brain during heavy thought process can actually lower your blood sugar. What? Oh, I know. This is the kind of stuff that you learn about when you're in my programs because I geek out on blood sugar fluctuations. But that's for another story, another time. For now, just understand that your brain uses glucose on a daily basis, okay? Now, the amount of glucose, not important right now. What we're focusing on is the more time that you spend in range, i.e. between 70 and 180, you know, the tighter we are with that, the better it gets, but we'll just use 70 to 180 for now. 
the more time that you keep your blood sugars between those ranges, the better off you'll be, which we already knew to a certain extent, but for your emotional health, turns out the same is also true. Now, when you experience hypoglycemia or a low blood sugar, that thinking, that emotional part of your brain gets tweaked a little bit, right? And we know the physiological impacts. We see that we get shaky and sweaty and our, our brain doesn't function as clearly. We get confused easily. There's this brain fog of like, what's going on? That's part of the low blood sugar. Your brain doesn't have enough glucose to function. However, your emotions are also connected to that. We see panic, we see fear, we see frustration. Uh, believe it or not, I know somebody who gets extra cuddly. <laughs> There's a number of different reactions we can see, but understand that yes, going low can impact your blood sugars. Now, what about high blood sugar? If there's not enough glucose to help the brain, that makes sense. But if there's too much glucose, what do we see there? Great question. So if we imagine uh, your blood stream, right? It's kind of flowing through like a river. And when you're in range, when you have good blood sugars, it's like a raging river. There's water, it's great. Everything's floating down the river as it should. As your blood sugar gets higher, it gets thicker. It's like syrup. Imagine a river, but instead of water, it's syrup floating down the river. You would imagine it's a bit different, right? The, the viscosity has changed. The amount of uh, effort would put into a kayak to paddle through the river, completely different experience. And so if you've got syrup running through your brain, it's going to impact, again, your emotions. But believe it or not, on uh, the hyperglycemia side of things, the high blood sugar, you're more likely to see uh, impacts in cognition. So your cognitive function, your thinking ability, your ability to focus and concentrate, those are more impacted from the high blood sugar. So lower, we see more emotional, higher, we see more cognitive function uh, delays. And so what's interesting though, is that it's not just the low and it's not just the high. Now you're thinking, Matt, what else is there? A medium? <laughs> no, it's the in range, but wild fluctuations between. And so what I experienced earlier today, which is why I, I was recording it earlier in the first place, is that I had some higher blood sugars. It was starting to creep up. I didn't like where it was headed, so I took action, right? And as a result, saw a wild swing. I had some insulin on board and I went for a walk. Those two things combined, surprise, surprise, can cause a rapid drop in glucose. And as a result, I dropped about 70 points in under 20 or 30 minutes. It was wild. And of course, with my calculations, and as you probably are familiar with, if you follow me in, in any capacity, I talk a lot about my blood sugar formula, so I can predict where blood sugars are gonna go. I went from 170 to 100 and leveled perfectly at 100, which I didn't think it was gonna be that perfect. I was aiming for like 95 to 110, right? And I was like, oh, unicorn, 100. I was stoked. But that drop drained me of energy temporarily, okay? It was before I went to the gym and I was like, do I even want to go work out anymore? Um, got a little bit frustrated, kind of on edge. I'm like, wow, I'm still in range. I never went out of range and I ended perfect. And I still felt the impact of that. And it turns out that rapid changes in your blood glucose can actually cause an emotional response as well. Now we're getting tricky. It's like, how do you maintain stable emotions <laughs> as a type one diabetic, right? Now, uh, I mean, if, if we're going off based of the data that we're talking about in this episode, stable emotions can come from stable blood sugars, right? Still not a guarantee, because as I mentioned, there are other impacts on your emotions as well. You know, somebody gives you bad news, somebody gives you great news, it's gonna be a wildly different response. Now, of course, emotions in general are your choice. Not a popular topic right there. <laughs> but you choose how you respond to different events. And so like earlier today, uh, I was like, oh, wow, my entire episode was corrupted. I have to film the entire thing again. And that was it. I'm actually pretty proud of myself. I don't usually respond that well. But I chose to say, you know what, let's just go do it again. Uh, this is what I have to do. There's no choice. There's no reason to be mad because being mad is just going to take more time away from my schedule, right? So that's a different topic entirely, but we do choose our emotions to a certain degree. However, blood sugars come into play. They can actually cause uh, a shift in your emotions, or there's at least a correlation that comes into that. Now, what's interesting is that, again, if you follow me for any length of time, you probably know that I'm relatively well controlled with my diabetes. Uh, didn't always used to be that way, though. And you know, these days I spend anywhere between 90, 95% in range on my daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, you name it. Um, I, well, there's no reason to get into that either, but 
uh, I'm, I'm very tightly controlled. And as a result, the days that I'm not, when I have a low and a high in the same day like last week, it jolts me. <laughs> and I'm like, whoa, what happened? And I can tell that it does impact my emotions. I can tell you it impacts my choices as well. Uh, it, it, I've noticed this that looking back over the years when I was not as well controlled, there were certain instances where I would have a rough blood sugar day and it would actually impact my decisions later on. For example, if I had multiple low blood sugars in a single day and someone said, hey, let's go for a hike. I'm feeling, let's go over that mountain over there. I'm less likely, and this might just be me, but it could be true for you as well. I noticed that I was less likely to say yes to activities if my blood sugars had been crappy all day. So multiple lows, hey, let's go for a hike. I'm thinking, do I really want to go low again, right? On the opposite end of the spectrum, if I've been high for hours on end, stubborn blood sugar, stuck in the 200s, 300s, 400s, and someone goes, hey, you want to go check out that new uh, Brazilian barbecue place, or Thai food, or pizza, or insert favorite food, and I'm thinking, ah, oh, man, I've been stacking and rage bolusing insulin all day, which, not safe, don't recommend, uh, and it just hasn't come down. I don't know if I want to deal with a 500 blood sugar, right? <laughs> and so it's like, if you're not in range, and if you see these wild fluctuations, not only does it impact your moods in that moment, but it also can impact your decisions in the future. And so as we keep our blood sugars in range for longer periods of time, not only do we increase quality of life in that moment, but we increase quality of life overall. It's actually quite interesting. And so, you know, if we're trying to avoid emotional swings, sure, blood sugars are a great place to start. And, uh, you know, there's a reason that we see so much difficulty within the type 1 diabetes space. It's because we're not educated to the full extent that we should be. Now, unfortunately, most of our medical teams are not giving us all of the knowledge that we need in order to see these higher levels of success. For what I've been able to accomplish, I did not learn this from my doctor, from my endo. I had to do my own research, my own trial and error, my own efforts for years, reading medical journals, talking to different people, uh, picking up on different strategies, reading books, again, testing myself and seeing what happens if I eat this kind of food. I went vegan and low carb and high carb, all this stuff. It's not easy, but it is simple. Now, for, uh, for anybody who is currently dealing with either emotional swings due to blood sugars, you're all over the map, right? Uh, or just frustration in general. Maybe it's hard to work out without going low. Maybe it's hard to eat your favorite foods without a post-meal spike. There is a solution for you. I told you I spent years dedicating my life to the craft of blood sugar stability, and I actually made a free training for you. You can check it out and get the answers to how do I stay in range, avoid lows, avoid highs, and all these different things, and I actually share my secrets about how I stay in range 90 to 95% of the time on a daily basis. You can get that for free at diabetesinaction.com. It's completely free, go watch the training, pull some of those tips and tricks, uh, help you stay with a more stable mood, <laughs> but more importantly, more stable blood sugars. Now, last thing I wanna mention is that I, I said that I currently spend a lot more time in range. It didn't always used to be that way. In fact, I neglected my diabetes for a number of years. I did not take care of myself, I'm not proud of it, but uh, I know that a lot of us go through something similar and there has to be a moment where you make a shift. And ultimately, like I said, it's not easy, but it is simple. There are two things that separate you from your best life with diabetes. Two things, that's it. Number one, a deeper understanding of how blood sugars work and why they fluctuate, why they go up and down, right? And once you have that deeper understanding, the second thing, is implementing, taking action on what you need to do. So ultimately it's this, know what you need to do and then do it. <laughs> That's the entire formula for success. Now, how do you know what you need to do? First step, you gotta go learn. You have to read books, attend conferences, uh, test on yourself, look up stuff on the internet, but how do you know which one is the right way to follow? And there's a lot of different paths. There's low carb, keto, vegan, paleo, eat whatever you want, right? There's, and that's just food. I haven't talked about exercise or dosing strategies. You have to find one source that you believe is the source of your future. So look at the person teaching. If they teach what you like to see in your future, in other words, 
freedom with food and stable blood sugars, freedom with activity and stable blood sugars, uh, sleeping a full night's sleep overnight. If that's stuff that you enjoy, then the training that I mentioned earlier is probably a great start for you because it's going to give you that deeper understanding. Okay, so again, that's diabetesinaction.com. Highly recommend you check that out. In fact, you can just type it in and get to it. Uh, but beyond that, step number two, how do you do what you need to do, right? You need to know what you need to do and then do it. That's implementation. Now that comes with accountability, whether that's telling your siblings or your best friends or your spouse, hey, I'm doing this new thing. Can you support me in this? Uh, that might look like accountability texts. That might be, hey, can you come to the gym with me? Make sure I'm going to the gym. Accountability is huge. That's also where a coach can come in very handy. Uh, but at the very least, tell someone that you see on a daily or semi-daily basis that you are on this new journey, that you are taking your diabetes into your own hands, okay? This needs to be a priority. And if it is not a priority for you, there's no reason for you to watch these videos. It's going to be super blunt with you. If you're not going to take action and you're just taking in endless amounts of information, you're just doing it for the dopamine hit. You're just feeling good about pretending that you're making progress. If you're not actually going to take action, then there's no reason for you to be here. At least not yet. Okay? But when you are ready to take action, consume all these videos. Okay? Go watch that training I mentioned. Start writing things down, getting an accountability partner. Take action for your own life. Take responsibility for that. And I guarantee you, you will see results. You will see a higher quality of life. You will see more stable blood sugars and finally achieve the life that you were meant to live. The life that you deserve to live. It's waiting for you when you're ready. Now, the emotional aspect of diabetes, last note on that topic that I want to give you. I think I already said last note, but there's a lot of notes. Um, there are going to be bad days. There are going to be days like last week for me where I went low and high. That was frustrating, right? It's okay to feel those emotions, but it's not okay to be those emotions. I say, I'm feeling frustrated, not I am frustrated, right? Um, and once you can differentiate between that to feel the emotion and then let it pass by, it opens up a whole new world. So, uh, feeling those emotions, completely normal. Give yourself grace. Sometimes blood sugars don't cooperate and that's okay. I'm not sitting at hundred percent time and range every single day for the rest of my life for a reason. Yes, I have hundred percent days, but that's not my constant, right? Acknowledge that there are going to be frustrating days and move on. So, uh, quick recap. What do you need to do right now with your new knowledge? Uh, go get more knowledge, <laughs> get your deeper understanding and then do something about it. Now, obviously this is a, this whole episodes about emotions. It's going to feel like you can blame your diabetes. Well, I'm just sad or mad or frustrated or angry or hard to deal with or pissed off because of my blood sugars. No, we can't blame our blood sugars anymore. Anymore. Why do I say that? Because now you have a solution. I know, I hate to do this to you, but I just gave you the solution so you can't blame your diabetes anymore. So if you are dealing with wild fluctuations, the highs, the lows, and you're sick of it, don't blame your diabetes. It's time to do something about it. So head over to diabetesinaction.com, learn first, then do something with that knowledge, and guarantee your entire life is going to change. Have an amazing rest of your day. Thank you so much for joining today. If you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe. This is how you get notifications for when we put new episodes up. There's bonus content going up all the time. You do not want to miss it. Cannot wait to see you in the next one. And keep up the fight.